Hey, folks, I'm WWE Hall of Famer Hacksaw Jim Duggan, and you're listening to another wrestling podcast. Tough guy, ho! It's time for uh, another wrestling podcast. The measuring stick just changed around here, buddy. You're looking at it. The best there is, the best there was, and the best there ever will be. They think they got the answers. I change the questions. The cream of the crop. Nobody does it better. These are the best in the world, brother. These are the best in what they do. When we talk about the legends of the sport, there's only two in my book. Another wrestling podcast. Another wrestling podcast. Now can you dig that, sucker? <laughs> All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another wrestling podcast. This is episode number 93, and if I'm trying to count that, I have to take off my shoes, my socks, and get a couple friends over to count all their fingers and toes. It is 93 episodes. I'm Jonathan Benjamin. And I'm Steve Credo, who will not be counting your toes. Uh, I don't... Uh, well, okay. And hands. You don't have to 93. be mean about it, but... Um, this is 93 episodes. We are another wrestling podcast. For anybody who is just tuning in right now, right now, um, we implore you to go back and listen to all of our other episodes. There's 92 of them. Uh, we've spoke with pretty much any and everybody in the world of professional wrestling. And beyond. And beyond. Uh, we've had porn stars. We've had... Uh, movie stars. Movie stars. We've had... Stars uh, from the past, stars superstars from, from the, the past, past, the present, yes, and the future, and the future. Um, so go back, listen to those episodes, follow us on all of our social media, uh, listen to us wherever you listen to podcasts. Um, but if you're looking to find us or find out more about us, I tell you to go over to another wrestling podcast. Dot com. Joining us once again on the show, we have WWE Hall of Famer Hacksaw Jim Duggan. He's going to be in town next weekend for his 2x4 comedy tour uh, up in Poughkeepsie, New York at the Laugh It Up Comedy Club. Be sure to check out laughitup.net for more information and tickets, but uh, stay tuned for that one. Today's show is brought to you by... Hey, Jonathan, I know obviously you're a big pro wrestling fan. The last time I hung out with you, you had a lot of unique pro wrestling items on you and with you. Uh, where, where do you get all this merchandise? Well, Steve, for once in your life, you can be just like me. And all of our listeners out there can be just like me as well. Um, I get my one-of-a-kind wrestling merchandise from ProWrestlingCrate.com. Now, Pro Wrestling Crate is uh, one of the latest crate subscriptions that you can get, but the best part about this is it's so unique and different than any of the other crates that are out there. Each month, uh, the, they're curated by a wrestler or a, a, a certain group involved with wrestling, and everything in the crate kind of revolves around a certain theme. So the first one had to do with Mick Foley, um, the second one had to do with extreme wrestling in Philadelphia. The third one is being curated by none other than the guys over at Kayfabe News, which should be amazing. But uh, you get shirts, you get buttons, you get pins, you get coasters, you get everything. And most of this stuff is one of a kind. Uh, if you don't get it, if you don't subscribe to Pro Wrestling Crate, then you really aren't going to be able to get this stuff. And uh, if you want any more information, be sure to go on over to our friends at Pro Wrestling Crate. You can follow them on Twitter at PW Crate. Um, they also have an Instagram, who doesn't these days, at Pro Wrestling Crate. And you can go to their website and sign up, which we highly suggest you do, at ProWrestlingCrate.com. Hey, now I know.
guest today is one of the most recognizable names in the business. He's a WWE Hall of Famer, an author, and you can catch him very soon on his upcoming comedy tour. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Hacksaw Jim Duggan. Thanks so much for joining us today. How are you doing? Well, my pleasure, fellas, but you know the first thing Hacksaw's got to do is give a big ho! It kind of fires me up, you know, gets me going nowadays. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely. Now, uh, Hacksaw, uh, you're a busy man these days. Your upcoming 2x4 comedy tour is starting on February 2nd and going until the 13th. Uh, how does it feel to be back on the road and uh, stepping into comedy? Well, this is uh, going to be a lot of fun, of course, to be back up in the Northeast, you know, being from Glens Falls, uh, uh, what actually happened, I've done quite a few of these up through Canada last summer. Ted DiBiase and I did the uh, two by four million dollar tour to England and Scotland. And it seems to be a, a great opportunity for wrestling fans to come out and, uh, and, and have the curtain pulled back on pole wrestling. You know, I, I tell folks, uh, it's the, the Hacksaw uh, show. If you want to see, hear some good knock, knock jokes or funny jokes about your grandmother, then go somewhere else, brother. <laughs> this is this is going to be uh, you know uh, stories about wrestling, road stories, traveling with my good friend uh, Jake the Snake Roberts and Damian, uh, ring stories about uh, Andre the Giant and the uh, Ultimate Warrior, you know, rip stories about Owen Hart and you know other guys. So it, and then of course we're going to have a Q and A and the uh, opportunity to take pictures and. Uh, your autographs and stuff. So it's a fun night out for wrestling fans. Now, um, how did you decide to kind of go out and, and start doing this? It's got to be a little bit nerve wracking. I know that you've been in wrestling forever, so it's probably not too hard to get you nervous, but it's a completely different monster. So what, what was going through your mind when you decided to start doing these, uh, comedy shows? Well, it's, uh, yeah, actually, you know, I got to give full credit to uh, Mick Foley. Uh, Mick is the guy that first started doing these. And, uh, yeah, I was with uh, Mick out in California and a couple of them at uh, last year's WrestleMania. And then uh, I did a couple with Jake here in uh, the States, at the uh, last one in uh, Zanies in Nashville. And, of course, I started doing them up through Canada and last summer through uh, Scotland and England. And, you know, it's, uh, uh, Comedy Club just seemed to be a good venue to have this type of event at. And I was up visiting my family up in Glens Falls, and uh, my friend Kenny Casanova from Albany uh, suggested that, hey, you know, we'll think about running up through the Northeast. And, uh, you know, I said, well, why not give it a shot? It's always good to get close to home. So we're kicking off the tour up in uh, Glens Falls, New York, and uh, going through and I got to bring my wife with me on the road. It'll be like the old days. So kind of a. Uh, second wind at this stage of the game. <laughs> sure. <laughs> now, uh, Jim, uh, during your run in uh, WWF, WWE now, uh, you were sometimes put into in the comedy role. Uh, did you enjoy this role maybe more than your hardcore uh, role in other companies? Uh, yeah, a lot of folks only remember that part of my career, but, you know, of course, uh, uh, I was started off as big Jim Duggan with short hair and clean shaven, and I wore a mask. I wrestled as a convict. Then I wore a fur with chains on it and wrestled as Wild Man Duggan. So I was three different characters before I found Hacksaw. And, um, you know, and then this Hacksaw, the, the, me and Buzz Sawyer, one man gang back in Mid South, we would beat the devil out of each other, you know. And uh, the character just evolved. And I went up to WWE, it evolved. It wasn't really a conscious uh, office decision, but it just kind of evolved that way. It actually worked out, you know, because, like I said, my good friend Mick Foley, who's 10, 12 years younger than me, uh, has trouble walking across the room. You know, I'm uh, 62. I still get in the ring once in a while. I'm uh, physically in good shape. So those guys that do all those high-risk moves, I tell the young guys I see at the Indies and stuff, I said, fellas, remember, you know, you got you life's a long time. you got to uh, take care of your body. I think that's what's certain with WWE now. You, every night's a big show, and every night all the talent is doing these high-risk maneuvers that are, you know, injury-prone type things, and a lot of guys are getting hurt because every night they're pressing the envelope. Where, you know, in uh, WWF days, if you're doing uh, Minot, North Dakota, you might work a headlock for 10 minutes. <laughs> now, throughout your career, you've spent time with uh, hundreds if not thousands of professional wrestlers um 
since we're talking about comedy, are there any specific wrestlers that stick out to you that you remember being like really funny or, or hilarious on the road? Yeah, I think uh, there, there was a few, uh, and you know, Kurt Henning, of course, was a big ribber. And that was a deal back in the day, uh, ribbing, you know, have, uh, heavy jokes played on each other. They had, there were so many guys there that had plausible deniability. It could be Mr. Fuji, it could be Kurt Henning, it could be the British Bulldogs, it could be the Nasty Boys. So you didn't really know who was pulling the ribs, but... Uh, I think Brian Nods of the Nasty Boys, he was an entertaining guy as long as you weren't the uh, object of his attention. <laughs> <laughs> sure. Uh, now we are excited to announce that on February 13th, you will be performing in our hometown of Poughkeepsie, New York at Laugh It Up uh, at Mahoney's Irish Pub. Uh, do you have any memorable moments in Poughkeepsie that maybe you could tell us about? Oh, yeah. Actually, uh, Poughkeepsie was, uh, you know, we used to do TV there at Poughkeepsie a lot back in the WWF days. And uh, it was always fun to be in, in, in Poughkeepsie. But I remember uh, one time in particular, we were getting ready to, uh, to leave the building and the crowd was all outside. And we could see the uh, the limo on the far side of the crowd. So it was me and Jake Snake Roberts. And, you know, back then the crowd was just rapid. They were so excited because a lot of people try to compare you to a sports team. You know, more like a rock and roll band back in the day, you know. So I'm looking at Jake, and I'm like, okay, buddy, I said, I'm through. We'll both make a break for the doors. Boom, go outside, get through the crowd, and I'll meet you at the limo. So he's, all right, Hacksaw, okay, here we go. So I had one, two, three, we opened the doors. Jake went out and put the door shut behind him. <laughs> he, got, he got Bob forever. I stuck out another <laughs> door. I was, sitting, I was sitting in the limo waiting for him. He's fighting through the people. <laughs> But he got me back. You know Jake would get me back. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Now, you mentioned that you're traveling with your wife, uh, and you're performing on the eve of Valentine's Day. So do you have any special Hacksaw Jim Duggan Valentine's Day plans after after your yeah. uh, performance? Well, hopefully, we, I think the Kips is the last day of the tour, so we get back home. You know, I, I tell folks, uh, you know, the tour itself, it's uh, the show – is a positive look at professional wrestling. You know, it's been a good business for me. I've been doing it almost, what, 36 years now. Uh, I've been with my wife for over over 30. I've never had to go to rehab for booze or drugs. Uh, I had a couple of misdemeanor arrests. No fellow when he's old, you know, but there was the 80s. What the hell, you know? <laughs> but uh, uh, overall, it's been a good business for me. I mean, you have some of the guys who the horror stories about Scott Hall and, you know, there's such a high divorce rate, high drug and alcoholism rate, but it's been a good business for me. And other people, too, guys like Tito Santana, a uh, good friend who recently passes, everybody knows, broke my heart, my good buddy Roddy Piper. It's a good business for him. So uh, I tell folks, yeah, we're not all Scott off. <laughs> sure. Uh, now, uh, Jim, we just saw the 29th uh, WWE Royal Rumble. You were the very first winner of the Royal Rumble. Uh, are you surprised that this event is still a huge success, even after all these years? Well, I don't think anybody could have saw that the, the WWE by itself would become such a huge event. I mean, and of course, the Royal Rumble is probably one of the top four, because it's one of the original four pay-per-views. But, you know, I... The, the whole worldwide appeal of wrestling, it's, it's unbelievable. You know, I do a lot of charity events for the NFL guys, and I'm like, uh, world champions, uh, where in the world have you guys been? <laughs> you know, since uh, I've wrestled, I've, I've wrestled in every state in the union, every province in Canada, in 30 different countries. I mean, it's wow. hard wow. to think of 30 countries, but it's amazing <laughs> the worldwide appeal of, uh, of wrestling around the world. I said, nobody knows... Uh, Peyton Manning over in Barcelona, but everybody will go, oh! <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Now, the Royal Rumble officially starts the road to, to WrestleMania. Um, you've been there in years past. Are you planning on attending WrestleMania 32 this year? Oh, yeah. They usually bring uh, a group of us Hall of Fame that I've been to. Uh, I don't know when was the last one I've missed, but yeah, of course, we have the fan access, which starts, I think, like four or five days before the actual uh, event uh, in Dallas. And, of course, uh, we do all our kind of media. And one thing that the WWE does that doesn't get nearly the coverage you should is all the charity work. So we'll do stuff with Special Olympics, Make-A-Wish, uh, Wounded Warriors. All those events will happen all that week. 
And then, of course, they'll have the uh, Hall of Fame ceremony, which is it's always fun. You know, get to dress up and uh, come on the red carpet. <laughs> I know my wife and my two daughters, they enjoy that part. <laughs> and then, of course, the big show uh, on Sunday, uh, they're going to try to break the uh, record of WrestleMania three, which we did in the Pontiac Silverdome for 93,000 people. Uh, they're shooting for over 100,000 here in, in Dallas. So wow. that's all, folks. Even if you're not a wrestling fan, uh, WrestleMania, it's like the Super Bowl. It's a, it's an event that you just got an experience to describe. Sure. Now, uh, uh, you mentioned the Hall of Fame. You were inducted a few years back. Uh, how did it feel to be inducted? And uh, who do you think, uh, in your opinion, still needs to be inducted into that Hall of Fame? Um. Yeah, of course, being inducted was great. Uh, 2011 here in uh, down in Atlanta, Georgia. I live in South Carolina now, so it was all my family, all my friends were able to come. So I had my own cheering section there. You know? <laughs> and uh, <laughs> it was nice to be recognized by your peers. And of course, I have uh, Ted DiBiase, a guy that I've wrestled thousands of times all over the world, that, that was really helpful in my career. Because all those second generation guys are a little more polished. And Ted really helped me induct me. It, it was uh, it was a great night. Something I'll always remember. Now, as guys to be inducted, you know, uh, I think they almost induct guys too soon. Even for me, I thought it was a little too soon. I mean, Edge, I love Edge. I think he's one of the best ever. And boom, but he's right in the Hall of Fame. I mean, there's a whole generation of guys. I've seen, you know, Rick, uh, Rick Martell, Rick the Model Martell. Uh, Tony Gurria, uh, guys like that, I think uh, they kind of looked over. Uh, I think a good chance to go in this year are the fabulous Freebirds. Uh, uh, one of my best friends, God bless him, Terry Gordy, mm-hmm. uh, one of the, the best uh, three man tag teams ever. And of course, they were really huge in Dallas back in the day. So uh, I could see them being inducted this year. Sure. Okay. Now, uh, <clears throat> you mentioned in the past that wrestling Andre the Giant at Madison Square Garden was was definitely a highlight of your career. Um, what was it like to be able to not only wrestle against Andre the Giant, but be friends with him outside of the ring as well? Well, actually, I had a, an opportunity to wrestle Andre very early in my career. I mean, really early. I wrestled him like a you know, half dozen times. Uh, cause it, as I, I went from Dallas to WWWF, they sent me to Hawaii. Well, I worked for the High Chief Peter Maivia, the uh, the Rock's granddad, and uh, I wore a mask over there, and I wrestled as a convict. And of course, everybody loved High Chief Peter Maivia, so all the guys that would go to Japan, you know, all the top WWF stars would go to Japan. On the way back, they'd stop in Hawaii and do a show for Peter to get a big crowd. So, you know, once a month, I got an opportunity to wrestle guys like Andre or Stan Hansen and. Uh, I got to develop, you know, a, a rapport with Andre. And, of course, he was instrumental in my career to move me from a, a mid-card guy at WWF to a, a main event guy when I knocked him out with my 2 by 4 <laughs> Now, uh, Jim, you also wrote a book not too long ago entitled Hacksaw, the Jim Duggan Story. Uh, did you enjoy writing this book, and uh, could there be another one in the works in the n- near future? It's doing pretty good for wrestling books. You know, obviously it's not, you know, a, a Mick Foley book who is a, an established author. But, again, it's a positive look at, uh, at wrestling. Of course, a, a catchy title, <laughs> Hacksaw the Jim Duggan story, it kind of goes over the like Hacksaw the Jim Duggan show. But uh, <laughs> I had a couple of different ideas for the title. You know, I gave the publisher, I'm like, the uh, cycle of the ring, uh, tough life, tough guy. They're like, uh, we'll go with Hacksaw the Jim Duggan story. <laughs> So, uh, but uh, like I said, it's a, a positive look at wrestling, and you know, you, and since that's happened, I mean, you know, this whole new life of doing comic cons and conventions and uh, stand up, it's a whole new aspect of the show. So there, there may be another book in the works that it's doing well enough, I guess, that the uh, Triumph Books out of Chicago is thinking about it. All right, now uh, it's no secret secret that prior to uh, wrestling, you were a part of the NFL. Um, who do you think is going to win the Super Bowl this year, the Broncos or the Panthers? Well, let's see. Where did I tell you I live, brother? South Sacalacky, <laughs> man. <laughs> we got to be pulling for the Panthers down here. 
you know, even though I went to SMU, my wife's a big South Carolina uh, uh, Gamecocks fan, but I think yeah, this year we were all pulling for Clemson. So here in South Carolina, you know, we're in Rome, so we're pulling for the Panthers. Great. Now, uh, uh, Jim, uh, where can fans find out more about your upcoming shows and, uh, you know, follow you or you're on social media or anything like that, too? Sure, yeah. I, I, I remember I used to joke with Piper. I called Piper one time. I went and went over 100,000 on Twitter. I'm like, Piper, I said, I got 100,000 followers on Twitter. Piper's like, I got over half a million. I'm like, yeah, I'll talk to you later, Piper. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah, my, my Twitter is uh, official hacksaw. Uh, Facebook is uh, Hacksaw Jim Duggan, and I really document my, my trips and stuff. Every weekend I'm somewhere. Uh, just a couple of weeks ago I was down in, uh, I was over in Oklahoma with me and Jerry, the King Waller, the, the young Don Eric's Jim Ross. So uh, usually every weekend I'm on the road. Uh, this weekend I'm wrestling in Wilmington, North Carolina on Saturday night, uh, come home Sunday, and then fly up to uh, Albany on Monday. So, uh, it's fun for folks if they like to keep up. Uh, that's a good way to do it. Great. Well, All Jim, right. uh, yeah, we're going to be there in Poughkeepsie. We can't wait. Um, we're, we're looking forward to the show. Uh, we wish you nothing but the best on this comedy tour. Well, thank you. I hope that folks have a lot of fun. It, you know, it's, it's humbling to be remembered this many years after uh, wrestling. So I try to give the folks as, as much as I can, and hopefully we'll all have a good time. Once again, thanks to Hacksaw Jim Duggan for joining the show. Uh, always a great guy to talk to. Uh, I can't wait for his comedy show next weekend. Once again, check out laughitup.net for more information on that one. We've talked about a lot of different things, Jonathan, and I think the one thing we haven't yet is talk about stables. Can we talk about stables? Oh, today? I loved her when she came down and she was in Playboy, and uh, she's actually with uh, she's actually with Brock Lesnar now, right? That's, that's Sable. Oh, this is Stable. Oh man, I had a whole Sable. I show got a ready. Th- th- in there too. So Stables, but nothing like a regular Stable, Jonathan, because you know we could DX this or NWO it all day we want. Uh, but I'm talking about some strange stables. You know, we recently uh, we saw an article on WWE.com highlighting some of the strangest stables in pro wrestling history. Uh, let's talk about it, Jonathan. Who were some of your favorite strange stables of all time? Um, you know, I think it's very important to to say that you know whenever we're doing these shows, we we look all over, we research, uh, do countless hours of research trying to find topics to talk about. Um, if you guys have a topic that you want us to talk about, you know, tweet it uh, at a wrestling pod, email us, uh, whatever you want to do, and we'll talk about it. We'd love to talk about it. This one was awesome. We found it on WWE.com, like Steve said. Uh, I can't wait to talk about some of my favorite stables. Um, Steve, I'm going to start by talking strangest about stables. some of my least favorite strange oh, stables, and then, the I'm tables. Gonna, and then I'm going to build up to my favorite. Okay. Uh, it's too easy if I just talk right away about my favorite. Um, I have to say that probably one of my least favorite stables of all time, at least favorite strange stable of all time, has got to be the Mexicals. Now, this is nothing to do with the fact that I didn't hmm. like Super Crazy or Psychosis or Juventud Guerrera. Uh, it is the fact that WWE, in their infinite wisdom, said, <laughs> let's see, what can we do with these oh, three man. Hispanic superstars? Let's throw them on lawn equipment, and they can ride to the ring to it, and uh, let's let's see how that lasts. <laughs> um, it was one of my least favorite uh, just because they they got lazy with it, they could have definitely done something better. Um, you know, me- Mexican wrestlers have a, a amazing, rich heritage of lucha libre, and and you know these guys were awesome performers in WCW and ECW. So the fact that they straddled them with this terrible, strange stable uh, is beyond me. And you know, I guess the reason that we should talk about this right now is because what's happening right now in the WWE, That's right. Steve, we've got the social outcast stable <laughs> oh that just got thrown together with none other than Curtis Axel, uh, Adam Rose, Heath Slater, and Bo Dallas. Now, it's the I feel so bad for you club. Yeah. Uh, is it just that they can't think of something for four individual people? <laughs> and they're just like, 
hey, I saw four of those guys in catering today, so let's throw them together and not really have a plan for them. Yeah, it's it's definitely not creative writing. It's 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 definitely it's not Mexico is what it is. <laughs> it's not Mexico at all. Yeah, John, there's been a few occasions where they've kind of just threw four guys that had a gimmick going and just you know it comes out with this, and I just I'm sorry. I think the three man band was better than this one. Uh, social outcasts. I mean, I, I can't even talk about any of them because I feel so bad for them. Uh, it's just one of those things that they just aren't working and they just need to be future endeavored, I guess. But, you know, it, it, they could have probably even went with uh, Job Squad 2.0 and I would have accepted it maybe. Yeah. But no, I don't know. I'm not really, not really social outcasts. They're more just, we don't want to use you on TV. You don't really have that look. You don't have, I don't know. I feel bad for them either way, but I mean, there's been a few others that have been bad. I mean, you just mentioned Mexico that you didn't really like. I'll tell you what, Jonathan, I was never really that big of a fan of the Mean Street Posse. Never a fan wow. of them. I uh, didn't dig the sweater vests. Uh, wow. They weren't really wrestlers to me. You know what I mean? They were, even though they gave them wrestling matches and this and that, but uh, it was just like, uh, what, the, what is this? This is this is this is a waste of my time. And uh, I don't know. I just didn't really care for Mean Street Posse. It was just. I don't know. I get it that they were Shane McMahon's buddies and whatever. They were kind of like hooligans and this and that. But when they started wrestling them and, and all this and that, I was just like, eh. Okay. So that is one of your least favorite strange yes, stables. Yes, strange ones, yes. All right. Um, I have one more least favorite strange stable before we get into the the favorites of, of, of mine. But uh, I'm going to go with... Four people whom I I enjoy as as wrestlers, but just didn't like their their pairing, uh, their strange pairing, I should say. And that would be the Union, um, aka Up Yours, or Union of People You Oughta Respect, Son. <laughs> um, that was none other than Ken Shamrock, The Big Show, Test, and their leader, Mankind. Now, um. They kind of came together because they didn't feel like they were being treated fairly by the corporation. Um, but that that doesn't really mean that they should have thrown the four of them together. Uh, separately, all four of them had enough star power to kind of get over on their own and yeah. had for a long time. So um, they debuted in 1999 in May, I should say, of 1999. <laughs> they disbanded in June of, of 1999. So... <laughs> That should tell you how long the union, uh, or once again up. It yours. Like it's a good name, but you know it just doesn't work. I think I think a lot of their their failed uh, strange uh, stables have happened to be with you know guys like Bo Dallas, Adam Rose, Curtis Axel, Heath Slater, where they all kind of had their own thing going, and then they throw them together, and now we're supposed to accept them as like this group of people that had nothing to do with each other beforehand, and now they're it's it, it, it's just too much thinking. I don't want to think about it. I want to watch wrestling. I want to see it and you know like you're the good guy you're the american flag wearing person okay you're the good guy and now you're going against the iranian guy who's bad guy whatever whatever yeah. but it, 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 i think it's too much thinking in my head to to even comprehend this now moving right along because th there was a lot of strange groups but a lot of the uh, unique ones and i think a lot of fa fan favorite ones uh because when you throw out the ones that we hate it, i think it all just comes together that you know it's just things that just weren't working and with guys that just weren't working but jonathan uh some of my favorite so let's talk about some of these favorite uh, ones because I think a lot of, of listeners out there would probably have to kind of agree, maybe agree. If you don't agree, that's okay. That's the whole point. Uh, BWO, the Blue World Order, Jonathan. Uh, copying the New World Order, but it was the Blue World Order. Uh, it, it was <laughs> it was a sad man's NWO, but it was funny because it was just it, it, it was funny. It was entertaining, and you know, like you didn't have to think too hard. You know, uh, you tell me, were you a fan of the BWO? I was a fan of the BWO. Um, I, you know, it's 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 one of those things you you saw them. I never got to see a lot of ECW until later on in life. So my BWO experience was really when they came to the WWE, which was fine, and and I enjoyed it. But um, I really liked some of the stuff that they did in ECW. Uh, they dressed up as Kiss. They dressed up as you know. They, that's where this kind of came from. They were just dressing up as different things, and then they parodied the 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 NWO. And um, I think it worked for them. Yeah, I think that those are three guys that 
you know, you believed as a group, and I like them all separate, but I think that the sum of them were was better than what they did sure. um, separately. So, um, and I had this really awesome union joke that I was going to use <laughs> about <laughs> how you said, "I'm going to paint the picture for you." I'm taking take the journey with me, folks. Steve said. <laughs> No one wanted the union in the WWF, and I said to myself uh, that Jesse Ventura has wanted the union in the WWF for years because he tried to unionize pro wrestling. That's a hilarious joke, (laughs) and we can go on from there. What were your thoughts on the BWO? Uh, it was just hilarious. Or one guy who puts a marker on his face for a beard. Uh, another guy who obviously shouldn't look like he should be a wrestler. Uh, the blue meanie uh, with his blue well belly, blue, blue belly, but he didn't have a blue belly. It was just the belly. Uh, but st- st- you know, Stevie Richards. Uh, it-, it was just fun. It was entertaining. Like I said, you didn't have to think about it. You saw these guys. You knew that they were copying the NWO, but it was their own NWO, the Blue World Order. So it was entertaining, and we got it. And it was weird. And it was unique. It was strange. It was. It was it was easy, but Jonathan, uh, let's get away from your union. But tell me something that you loved. Well, give me a strange one that you loved. My guilty pleasure in professional wrestling and my most favorite strange stable has got to be hands down, no questions asked. I will tell you this answer every time. <laughs> it is the Spirit Squad. I'm talking Johnny. I'm talking Nikki. I'm talking Mitch. I'm talking Mikey, and I am talking. Johnny. And that is <laughs> why it was so amazing. You think about these five guys, uh, only o- only one is really active in the WWE these days, um, but they were all great. I just can't stop thinking how awesome the Spirit Squad was together. Um, a lot of people hated them, and a lot of people didn't give them the credit that they deserved, but they got so much heat. Um, if you go back and look at it, if anybody's listening to this that knows me, they know that uh, there's a lot of times that during the Spirit Squad's run, I dressed up as the Spirit <laughs> Squad and went to local house shows, uh, Evansville, Indiana. If anybody's listening from Evansville, Indiana, yeah, that was me. I was that <laughs> guy. I had uh, I went out, bought my own Spirit Squad outfit. I ever so carefully... Uh, ironed on letters on the back of it that make it say Johnny, just like what they had. Um, And then I would go to Robert Stadium in Evansville, and when the Spirit Squad came out, I would go nuts and jump up and down and and, and annoy (laughs) everybody. And there was several points when the action was going on in the ring, but people were booing me out in the audience, and I knew that I had done my job for the day. So uh, I implore, once again, I said it, Go back, look at the WWE Network, go over um, the the best of DX or whatever, and you can see how great and how underrated the Spirit Squad was. Now I'm thinking about it, Jonathan. I'm just looking, uh, you know, there's been so many strange stables. You know, granted, we're so used uh, to the NWO and, uh, you know, DX and all that kind of stuff, The new, you know. But just to look back on how many weird ones there were. Uh, some of my favorites, though, you know, the, the Dudley Boys, when they had their whole Dudley family with Joel Gertner and all that, ECW was, it was awesome. Uh, Big Dig Dudley. Big Dick Dudley, not easy to say uh, off the top of your mouth, but, uh, uh, but you know, it, that was a great one. Um, Dances with Dudleys. Yeah. Uh, I also loved the oddities uh, just for the music. I was a big ICP fan. Uh, you would I, be. I, I, hey, hey, I'll still listen to him. Uh, you know, I just loved it. I think, was it John Tenta? Was it was Earthquake Under the yes, Mask? He yes. Was Golga. Yeah. I, I honestly, I was thinking about it the other day. I was like, I have no idea what their names were. I just knew Kurgan was in it or something like that for a little Kurgan, bit. Kurgan, Golga, the Giant Silva. Uh, Luke, Luna Vachon Luchan, yep. and ICP. Yeah, so uh, I, it was it was different. I, I don't know. ICP was really big at that time, and uh, um, I don't know. I love the Audis. I think I just love their theme song more, so I didn't really care who they were in it, but uh, I don't know. Uh, and the one thing I want to say right now, too, going, is the Cosmic Wasteland. I love that one. Um, you know, uh, Stardust, great. When you start to add him with a, a team as... The Ascension, uh, you know, the Ascension really didn't have anything going for them when they came up to the main roster, and they were kind of like, eh. But with Goldust, they kind of have like this comic booky, super villainy twist to it, and it, it just it works. You know what I mean? A lot of things don't work, but this one I think is working. And if they can only do a little bit more with it, I think it'd be cool. Um, but I don't know, uh, Jonathan. What, any more of your favorites of these strange stables? Sort of along the lines of the Spirit Squad, but my number two guilty pleasure 
favorite strange stables comes to us all the way from WCW. Um, and that would be three count. That is your <laughs> resident uh, parody of a boy band. And it's the predecessor to a three man band is three count. And that was Shane Helms, Shane Shannon Helms. Moore and Evan courageous, uh, which were, was an amazing gimmick. I mean, this was back when this was in, in 99. And so this was when boy bands roamed the earth. Backstreet, the NSYNCs, everything you can think of. Um, they even had their own manager as Tank Abbott, like oh to to help them out. If you can think about that, but it was it was amazing. Uh, they would come out and dance. They did these cheesy music videos and stuff. I, I this is what the WWE Network's for. Like if Definitely. you go back and look at this stuff, uh, they they even you know they they recorded a song, uh, "Dance with Three Count." Um, it, it was amazing, and you really should go out and watch some of this stuff. I think this is when it's fun and things like this, it's not taken too seriously. Yeah. Um, but they don't really do this sort of thing anymore. Like They gave these people a huge like backstory. They're a band, they're a boy band, whatever. Like we were talking about earlier, they just threw four people together. Yeah. With that being said, right now, I'm going to challenge you. I know <laughs> it's going to be difficult uh, off the top of your head, but if you could... Throw four people in the WWE together right now, right. and maybe even give them like a name or a backstory or whatever you can think of. Who would you choose? Four people. Uh, I, I like face paint. So let me think. Um, I got it. Okay, I'm gonna take the Usos, who kind of wear some face paint, and Goldust and Stardust. Get ready, Jonathan, for Uso Golden. Wow. I that is, that's, I'm horrible at this game. I guess like okay, I got another one for you. You know the Bullet Club's really popular. Yeah. So I got the BB Club with Hornswoggle, El Torito, and uh, I, don't, I, I don't I don't know any other midgets. So we'll probably have to get two more midgets for it. So uh, BB Club like a BB gun, like Bullet Club BBs because they're midgets. I guess they're small. Yeah. Uh, that's, <laughs> that's what we're doing here. Okay. I'm All not right. good at this. All, All right. right. I, I can't think of anything else. But that that would be my attempt at it. But uh, whatever. I tried. Uh, okay. All right. Well, uh, if you you're get, so if you're so good at this, how about you give me four? Well, you got an F for effort, so um, <laughs> you put the F in effort. How about that? Um, I'm gonna go with um, I don't know. This is difficult. Uh, I'm gonna say Bray Wyatt because right. uh, we have a lot in common. Uh, Cesaro, one of my favorites. All right. Um, King Barrett. All right. Wade Barrett, and Kevin Owens. All right, well, what are you going to call them? What is this? Well, um, I like all four of them. They're great wrestlers. Uh, how about a little Bray-O, Bay-O, because get it like Bray, Bray-O, Cesaro, Bray-O, Bay, Barrett, like Barrett, and Kevin Owens, so Bray-O. And I thought I was bay <laughs> Uh, we should stick to our day jobs, Jonathan. Yeah, we should. You guys out there listening to another wrestling podcast should get on Twitter, uh, the Twitter machine, and send out a tweet at a wrestling pod and let us know either your favorite or your least favorite strange stable, and then hell, throw Make together yeah. your own stable and and let us know. Um, we can't wait to hear from you guys, and we are almost out of time. And if you like our show, make sure to check out some of our friends. Check out Main Event Marks. Head on over to Facebook.com slash Main Event Marks. You can join Angry Cooter and his panel of smart Main Event Marks every Thursday at 9 p.m. for an uncensored show for the Marks by the Marks. That's right, and we are here to spread the wealth. Um, If you love professional wrestling... We urge you to go over to PWPNation.com. PWP Nation is a wrestling media website and community that loves professional wrestling. They strive on creating an array of interesting articles and reviews on everything professional wrestling. Head on over to PWPNation.com. Also, be sure to head on over to ProWrestlingSheet.com. It launched in August of this year, and it strives to report on the stories you actually care about in the world of professional wrestling, not just clickbait, 
filling most news sites. Founder and editor-in-chief Ryan Satin previously worked uh, as a senior producer for TMZ.com, where he has helped the company become a force in wrestling reporting, largely in part to his exclusive stories he landed on a constant basis. Make sure you head on over to ProWrestlingSheet.com. Well, that's the show. Uh, We want to thank you all for listening today. Every week we do this show free of charge for you, the fans. If you're wondering how to repay us, we have just the thing. Subscribe to us on iTunes, and while you're there, be sure to rate us and give us a good review. And if you're looking for more information about AWP, then head on over to anotherwrestlingpodcast.com. We are all over social media, and you can find us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, YouTube, and more. And if you're an AWP super fan, you can go show your support by going over to ProWrestlingTees.com and buying one of our official AWP shirts. We couldn't do the show without you, so tune in next week for... (sighs) Another Wrestling Podcast. Podcast.